Excuse me. Seen Captain Leggett around? Leggett? Leggett? Yeah, the homicide squad. You know, fat so like it. The guy with a perpetual hangover. Oh, him. No. I haven't seen him today. He was in last night to see the show, but oh, so he's far... He's got to be here. Left word of my office to meet him. Unless somebody's pulling a gag on me. Where's the phone? Just plug it in. Any of those booths. Thanks. Give me police headquarters, please. Hello? It's Captain Leggett there. I hope you'll forgive my little trick in getting you here, Mrs. Devray. I know it was wrong using the captain's name, but when your office wouldn't give me an appointment, I was a little desperate, I guess. May I sit down? It's all yours, sister. And buy yourself a Mickey. My compliments. Please. It wouldn't take a minute. No, I never start anything I can't finish. I'm all tied up, see? I'm not taking anybody's case right now. And I'll even tell you why. Because I'm going fishing. But this is important, Mr. Devery. Look, lady. You know how some people are about liquor? It's like a disease with them. Well, I'm that way about trout. The season opens tomorrow, and I'm going to be up there in the Catskills to murder or ma'am. You only knew what a jam I'm in. Dames and jams. For three seasons now, they messed me up the last minute. <laughs> oh, no. Not this year, baby. I'm not the only private detective, you know. Captain Leggett says you're the only private detective who can do a miracle. That's who said that? He also said that you ought to be in jail, the way you break all the rules. He doesn't approve your way with women, either. Blood brother to a wolf, as he put it. Mm. My pal. But he admitted you do get results. And he said half the hoodlums in town would jump through a hoop for you. Would that include Mr. Sapphire? Now, don't get me wrong. I'm still going fishing, but... Joe Sapphire, huh? You're tangling with a pretty tough boy, lady. You know, Joe doesn't exactly kid around. What did Leggett say about it? It isn't a case for the police. Not yet. That's where you come in. I thought perhaps you could stop Mr. Sapphire before he... before he murders my husband. I'm Mrs. Winslow. My husband owns this place. That is, he's a partner. Go on. Well, he's had nothing but bad luck lately. Business troubles, bad investments. So he took a fire at Joe Sapphire's dice tables, eh? Roulette. Ah, sucker. Now Joe wants his dough, or he'll be wearing a new dress. A black one. Please. Some wives I know would consider it a break to get rid of their hubby. I should tell you the truth, I suppose. Yes, it usually helps. I'm in love with Steve Mason, my husband's partner. Now, wait a minute. So Sapphire's gunning for him, too? No, no, you don't understand. Naturally, I don't want anything to happen to my husband. But if anything does, and the police find out about Steve and me, they'll think he did it. Now, that is a switch. Wife wants to keep hubby intact, keep boyfriend out of trouble. Hmm? Yeah, that almost intrigues the old master. Oh, if I didn't have that date with a mess of trout tomorrow... It I... wouldn't interfere. You could see Mr. Sapphire tonight. I and just what would I say to him? That I'm going fishing and I'd appreciate it no end if he'd postpone the massacre until I got back? <laughs> Wait a minute. A wild catch like that. It's almost weird enough to appeal to Joe's sense of humor. Jim. Jerry! Hello, Joe. Louis? You're just in time, my friend. Louis doesn't understand the game. <laughs> Who's the new office boy? His name is Sylvester. Fantastic, huh? <laughs> I couldn't resist him. Sylvester, shake hands with Mr. Devery. Jerry Devery, one of the best, even if he's in the sordid business. Why the dick, huh? A pleasure, Sylvester. I doubt. Likewise. 
<laughs> Isn't he a surly character? Go, sit down, Sylvester. Well, come on, Jerry. Why don't we set before we talk business? Three games across, huh? Well, I'm sort of in a rush, Joe. I've got a lot of packing to do. I'm going fishing tomorrow. That is, if uh, you'll do me a little favor. A favor? So we'll play for it. You win, it's all yours. You lose? Well, we'll still talk about it. One game, that's fair enough, isn't it? My heart, Joe. A whole game, all that suspense. Uh, couldn't we just uh, cut for it? After you, my friend. What do you know? Up popped the devil. Now, that is a curious coincidence. I palmed that one out of the deck. Where'd you get the stranger? Mm -hmm. Awfully cold, too. Always carry a couple of spares, Joe? <laughs> Did I tell you he was sharp? Did I tell you? <laughs> oh, you're marvelous, Jerry. Marvelous. Well, go ahead, laddie. Name it. That favor is on me. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. I knew you'd help me out. Oh, just a temporary thing. It seems some mug is putting the squeeze on a client of mine. I thought, well, maybe it... You sort of looked after my guy for a few days and take a great load off my mind. We're up there toying with a the trout, you know. Is that all? A pleasure, my friend. Don't give it another thought. Now I can really concentrate on those fish. Oh, yes, this guy you're underwriting for me. His name is Winslow, Fred Winslow. Hmm? Runs a couple of nightclubs. Oh, <laughs> so you know him, huh? But that is the topper, the absolute topper. <laughs> Take the edge off his whole act. <laughs> Tell me what. You've been misinformed. There was a little misunderstanding between us, but Winslow straightened things out just this afternoon. The boys will tell you. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh, now, don't tell me he paid off. With what? Coin of the realm, my friend. Not quite in full, but a very satisfactory chunk. Well, that's the story. I wonder where he dug it up. Guy as broke as Winslow. Shall we tell him what we think? This will kill you, Jerry. You know that burglary at the Tiger Club last Saturday night? Yeah. Well, by a strange coincidence, the sum Winslow paid me today was the exact amount lifted from his safe. You take it from there. <laughs> well, he robbed his own till, eh? Doubles his money when the bunny company makes the loss good. He lets the cops arrest the cashier for the fall guy. Sweet character. Use your phone. You understand, Jerry, I wouldn't want the police to hear about this. They might even want the money back. In fact, so far as the law is concerned, I don't even know Winslow, right? Right. All I'm interested in is going fishing. Yeah. Can't do it. It's just going on. Message. Shoot. Tell her everything's under control. You'll see her when you get back. Okay, Mr. Devery. Give us the share and when she finishes. Love me. Sure. 
careful. Well, don't worry about Fred. He's upstairs in the office. He's still trying to make the books alibi his business judgment. Poor Fred. Poor Fred? Poor me. I had a few bucks, you know, before that genius talked me into this partnership. And now what have I got? You have me, Steve. Do I? What about that date you wrote this afternoon? There aren't going to be any more dates, Steve. Not until we tell Fred. What? Now, wait, let me finish. I know it's a bad time, he's so upset and disagreeable, but don't you understand, dear? People can't help falling in love, even if one hasn't the right. But we can't help letting it be cheap, always meeting behind his back. We can't go on like that. You do love me, don't you? This is it, Chef. Come on, then. We'll go up and tell him now. It's the only fair thing to do. Sorry to interrupt you, Fred, but... Fred! You better go downstairs, Chef. Sorry, Steve, but I can't take failure. One last request. See that Sharon gets the insurance money, please. thought was of me. I'm so ashamed, Steve. Insurance money? He must have been out of his mind. Our partnership policy was good for accidental or natural death, or even murder. But suicide? That lets the insurance company out. I better call the police. Don't touch that. Your fingerprints. It's a good thing we have this. You mean, except for that letter, they might think it was murder? Anyone would think. That's a lot of money. A hundred thousand dollars. If anything should happen to this little piece of paper, you'd be fixed for life. Just as Fred wanted it. Sylvester. Get in the cab. What's the idea? You won't need this junk where you're going. Oh. oh, you're getting soft, Sylvester. I don't think you broke more than a couple of bones. Night's still young. What? Okay, get in the cab. Very humiliating experience, Jerry. Very humiliating. It was just like a slap in the face. Joe's kind of disappointed in you. He was on the level with you and you ratted on him. Ratted on him? Sure. I didn't know what it was all about when the police picked me up. And they were very nasty to me, Jerry. Let me show him. Lots of time, Sylvester. Lots of time. Where was I? Oh, yes. All the time they're pushing me around, I'm in a fog. They don't tell me Winslow's been bombed till my lawyer gets there. 
Bumped? Now, don't give me those big baby eyes. You know, all right. You're making a mistake, Joe. You made a mistake when they spilled two legged about me. Oh, now, you know better than that. I didn't even know about Winslow. When did that happen? He's stalling. They found him about nine o'clock or so. He got it about an hour before, they figure. Eight o'clock, huh? <laughs> Don't you get it, Joe? I'm your alibi. Of course, if you get me sore enough, I might forget about being here earlier tonight. Well, don't stand there like idiots. Get Mr. Devery's hat for him. No hard feelings, Jerry boy. You know how it is. Anybody can make a mistake. If you miss the train, we'll drive you off, okay? No, I'm afraid fishing's out, Joe. You see, it takes a pretty good right hand casting for trout. But you can do me a favor, though. Sure, anything you say, just name it. Keep Louie back. Sylvester. You're a pretty naughty boy. <laughs> Did I tell you he was good? That was beautiful, Jerry. Beautiful! <laughs> Thanks. Can I see that ring a minute, Joe? Oh, sure. You know, the next time you slap a friend, Joe, you should take this ring off. Because it hurts. See? You all right, Jerry? I remember. I'll be seeing it. Now, Mrs. Winslow, Mr. Mason, your husband's partner, has testified that the deceased left the nightclub and retired to his office about 7 o'clock. That's right. A little before 7, I think. And after that, when did you next see the deceased? Not until... Not until Mr. Mason and I found the body. Well, I know this is painful for you, Mrs. Mason. You're being very kind. But just one more question. During the evening, before you found the body, did you or Mr. Mason leave the nightclub at any time? No, sir. That is, I didn't. And I don't think Mr. Mason did. But I couldn't be sure. You see, I wasn't paying any particular attention. But he was there every time I noticed. Thank you, Mrs. Winslow. That'll be all now. Thank you, Coroner. Captain Leggett, please. You swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Your name? Henry Leggett. Police Captain, Homicide Squad. I think we'll save time if we allow the Captain to state the facts in his own words, keeping in mind that all this inquest is properly concerned with is establishing the cause of death. Winslow was killed by a bullet entering his right temple. Powder burns on the skin indicate that the murderer held the gun within a few inches of the victim's head. Well, Mr. Coroner. Just a moment, Captain. Uh, this is Mr. White representing the insurance company interested in our verdict here. If there's no objection, I see no harm in hearing what he has to say. I shall be very brief. Before we jump to any hasty conclusions, Captain, I suggest the possibility of Mr. Winslow having fired that fatal shot himself. Suicide? <laughs> Not a chance. At least I never heard of anyone killing himself without leaving fingerprints on the gun, unless, of course, he was wearing gloves. And there weren't any gloves on Winslow. Well, that's a point, but uh, scarcely conclusive. You haven't forgotten the Benson case, have you, Captain? Captain Leggett insisted that was murder, too, until our investigation proved that the suicide sister faked the evidence in order to collect the insurance. Now, understand me, I don't expect any such fraud in this case. I'm merely speaking hypothetically. <laughs> I shall be quite candid with you, ladies and gentlemen. A hundred thousand dollar insurance policy depends upon your decision. Now, that's a great deal of money. I ask you not to be stampeded into some hasty, uh, ill-advised verdict because of some uh, snap judgment, especially in a case of this kind, where there are so many curious, I might say, peculiar circumstances. Take the powder burns, for instance. How often does a murderer place the weapon almost against his victim's skull? 
And did anyone see this uh, mythical killer? According to the testimony, no one was seen to enter Winslow's office until the widow and his partner went there. So... So I still say it's murder. I'm sorry, coroner, but it's time to shut off all this hot air and get down to cases. Sergeant, bring in the witness. What witness? The witness that's going to take the snap out of my judgment and the uh, suicide out of yours. Put your hand on the Bible, please. I swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God. That I do. Be seated. Your uh, name, please? Mrs. Rosemary Gargan. That's all one word, Rosemary. Everybody calls me Rosie, though. And you work as cleaning woman in the building where Mr. Winslow had his office? Third and fourth floors. They're my job. That's right where it happened, you know, in 409. Yes, yes, we know. Now, uh, Mrs. Gargan, on the night in question, about uh, 8 o'clock, did you see anyone enter Mr. Winslow's apartment? That I did, sir. Oh. And very suspicious-like she was acting, if you ask me. A woman? Just like in the detective story. I'm scrubbing up the hall, the one that's around the corner from the elevator, when I hear somebody come soft-like up the stairs, walk a little ways, then stop. So I peek around the corner. And there she is, standing sort of wild and excited-like, right in front of 409. Not much more than a kid she was, maybe 19 or so, with a lot of that dark brown hair. Uh, don't forget the pocketbook. I'm coming to that. It was one of them big loose things, and she reaches a hand down inside like she wants to make sure she had whatever it was with her. And did you actually see the gun or whatever it was? She peers around just then to make sure the coast is clear. So I have to duck back out of sight. And the next I see, she's straightening herself up, kind of desperate. Then she marches right in on Mr. Winslow without even knocking or anything. Then what did you do? Oh, I went down and cleaned up 342. I had to skip it earlier because they was working late there. Uh, just a moment. You ask us to believe that when you saw this desperate, suspicious-looking woman burst into 409, you calmly went on about your own business? I've been a cleaning woman for 20 years, mister, and nobody's had to fire me yet. But if I got nosy every time I saw a strange lady enter a gentleman's office at night, I wouldn't have lasted 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Pay to the order of Stephen Mason, $100,000. It's all yours, sweetheart, just as soon as I cash it. Couldn't you just find it over to me? What, and have the insurance company jump on us with both feet? Remember, it was a business policy. They'd be mighty interested to know why I gave it to you. Of course. I didn't think of that. No, Steve, not yet. I don't get it. The Coy Act was all very well when Fred was alive, but he's dead now. And I don't believe in ghosts. Please, Steve, I'm still worried about everything. Practically had to dope myself with these sleeping pills to get any rest last night. Okay, sweet, and don't worry. You heard what the jury said. It was murder. Thanks to old Rosie. What a break that was. We should pension that old dame off when this is all over. I keep wondering about that girl. The one she saw. You don't suppose she was there when Fred... Stop worrying, will you? Besides, she's the one who's in a jam now, not us. The police wouldn't believe her now in a stack of Bibles. Hello? Oh, hello, Mr. Devery. Why, yes. Yes, I'm all alone. Now? Why, I, I guess so. All right, I'll expect you in 20 minutes. Couldn't tell him you were here, could I? Don't you see how careful we've got to be? All right, do us both a favor and get rid of that guy. What's he snooping around for anyway? You told me it washed him up when Fred died. That's right. And I'll make it very clear to him. In a nice way, of course. Look, Sharon, I'm not joking. Devery is dynamite. Don't you try playing cute and cagey with him. Don't worry, I'll take care of it. You run along and cash that check.
Come in, Mr. Beverly. Hello. I'm afraid I spoiled your fishing trip, didn't I? You didn't miss. You really should have gone, you know. I mean, after it all happened, there was nothing to keep you here, was there? What? Still, I do appreciate the spirit. Deserves a drink, at least. Oh, I'm sorry. It's against my rules. You know, the Devery system. Number one, never take a dame fishing. Number two, never let a client know you nip on the job. I know how we can get around rule number two. You're here by fire, Mr. Private Detective. I'm no longer a client. Ah, oh, you're making me drool, but uh, no can do. And that goes for you, too. How about firing me, I mean? No can do. He says so right here. This is the contract you signed the day you hired me. How many nips did you sneak on your way over here? Don't be silly. I know what I signed. Oh, but you didn't read the fine print. The part down here that starts, in the event of murder, in English. Just that I'm still in there pitching, baby. I can't let somebody kill a client of mine and get away with it. It ruined my reputation. And this? This $5,000 fee, it says here. Oh, that. Well, that's only in the event I deliver the murderer. You know, sort of a COD. Mm -hmm. Actually, if the police beat me to it, no dough for Deborah. I see. What's the matter? Want a cut rate? Look. I always like contented clients. You think I'm taking advantage of the technicality? Okay. I'll tell you what. We'll cut the cards. Got a deck here? Yes. On that table. I feel awfully lucky. Mm. Up, up the devil. Ladies first, you know. Thanks. Now, draw one for yourself. You know, baby, there's something about you. I'm even going to draw. What for? I've decided to play along for free anyway. But... What's five grand between friends? You're my kind, and I'm going to see that you get every break that's coming to you. Here. No need of both of us suffering. Thanks. Ever since the inquest, I have been a little rocky. Yeah, that insurance guy wasn't very subtle, was he? Oh, well, even so, you needn't worry. Thanks to old Mrs. Goggin. Even without her. I knew it wasn't suicide. As soon as I found out your husband smoked cigarettes. I don't understand. It's pretty nervous business working yourself up to commit suicide. If a guy smokes, it doesn't take a time like that to suddenly lay off, does it? No. He usually kills a whole pack working up enough nerve to... Pull the trigger. Well, what do the cops find in your husband's office? Mm, cigarettes in his pocket? Yes. The ashtray empty. Not a cigarette stub in the place. Very interesting. Yet, uh, working late like that, he naturally would have done some smoking. So somebody emptied that ashtray. That girl. The brunette girl. She must have been smoking before she did it. Lipstick on a cigarette. She had to get rid of them. Maybe. Something like that. Unless you and Mason have been telling me some tall fibs. Just thought I'd ask, that's all. Well, I guess I'll go talk to Brownie Locks, then. You mean you know who she is? Could be wrong, I suppose. But the police have made no progress at all. The cops are too scientific. Me, I'm just lucky. Especially with dames. I'll be seeing you. Got to have a wife, I tell you. Look, let's start all over again. I mean the cashier who worked here. The one they arrested for heisting the safe. You know, Carrington, Albert Carrington. Mm -hmm. All I want to do is talk to his wife. Good trick if he can do it, bud. He only buried a 10, 12 years ago. Did you ever meet his girlfriend, that cute, dark-haired number? Look, fella, you're all mixed up. How about a little pick-me-up, huh? Carrington never went for dames. He was strictly a family guy. The only thing he ever cared about was that little girl of his. That must have been two other guys, I guess. Mm -hmm. Thanks, it's the same. Okay. That little girl of his. She couldn't be so little if the mother died 12 years ago. Did you ever see her? Once or twice. 
Al never wanted her to come around here, but I used to see her wait for him up the corner. How old? Mm, 18, 19. Brunette? Definitely. Here, buy yourself a drink. Are you kidding? <laughs> I don't have to buy my drinks. Oh, thanks, it's the same. man, lady. What do you want? I have to check the stove. It's a corny gag. It always works. You get out of here. Take it easy. Just a nice, quiet little chat, that's all. Mm, moving again, huh? Let's see, that makes four times in ten days, doesn't it? Not bad for an amateur. Who are you? Jerry Devery's the name. Private detective. That's right. Sit down. How did you find me? Got a friend in the flower business. His boys get around. Sort of interested in crime, huh? Police have it all figured out, haven't they? What's your theory? Sorry, kid. But you gotta get hold of yourself. Here, sis. I don't smoke. You don't smoke? You know it's little items like that that sometimes have set a whole apple cart. If you're telling me the truth. Now maybe I can help you. Nobody can help me now. Well, then what have you got to lose? Come on now, tell me all about it. No? All right, then I'll tell you. You check me where I'm wrong. To the sweetest daughter in the world, Daddy. It was quite a jolt when they arrested him, wasn't it? He doesn't look like a thief. He's not a thief. You never doubted him, did you? You knew he was innocent before he told you. But if he didn't crack that Winslow safe, then who did? Must have been Winslow himself, huh? So you decided to make him admit it, only you lost your head and shot him. No, right? I didn't, I tell you, I didn't. I was half crazy and I took Dad's gun and I thought it might scare him into telling the truth. When the time up, I just couldn't do it. He took the gun away from me and said if I go home like a good girl, he'd forget all about it. Was he smoking? I, I think so. Yes, I'm sure he was. But you didn't. Not even one cigarette? I don't smoke. You don't believe me, do you? You think I killed him, but I didn't. I swear Please I didn't. Please, stop eating your gums. Let a fellow think. Look, baby, I think I can get you out of this if you'll do exactly what I say. Now, one pack, that's the first thing. This is practically a written confession. Just sit tight until you hear from me. It won't be too long. How oh, can I thank you? Remember this, baby. Whatever happens, no matter what you think, I'm still in your corner. So keep your chin up. Police headquarters. Give me Captain Leggett, please. Hello, Fatso. Wake you up? My, my, my. What? Well, I have some news for you. You know that old guy you're holding for the Winslow safe job? Well, that brunette you're looking for is his daughter, Phyllis Carrington. <laughs> you call that news? We've known that since the inquest. You have? Looks like you're the one that's been sleeping, Jerry, my boy. But have you found her yet? Well, I have. She's at 321 East 87th Street. Yeah. Book her for murder.
Hello, Sharon. Have you seen the papers? Well, what are we going to do? If you can't let an innocent girl... I can't talk now. Come in. Hello, Mason. Hello. Why, I... Oh, you've seen the good news, huh? I just left Leggett in the D.A. Thought you might like to hear some of the details. Here. Thanks. Uh, look, I'm kind of busy right now, if you don't mind. Oh, not at all. I'll catch you later, huh? Oh, before I forget, how would you like a grandstand seat at the big show? Got a promise of two seats right on the aisle. Well, I'll have to sit with the witnesses at the trial. Try? Well, that's only the formality. I mean the big show up the river, the execution. Being a partner and pal of the man she killed, I thought perhaps you'd like to be there. How can you be sure they're convicted? Nice looking young girl like that. You never can tell with juries. If that baby gets off, brother, I'll turn in my license. Why, the crazy little fool admits crashing in here with a gun on her. And just about the time the cops say Winslow is bumped. Now, if any way you add it up, that little lady's going to get it. The jury won't be out five minutes. And then the death house, watching the clock tick it off. That's the worst part, they tell me, the waiting. Why, even some of the toughest guys get so hysterical, I sometimes have to carry them into the chairs, slobbering like babies. Now, this will be my first time watching a pretty girl get the juice. I guess she won't look so pretty with a head. For sake, man, do you have to? Oh, I'm sorry, Mason. Bad habit we pick up in this racket of mine. Forgetting that some people still have a few sensibilities left. You're right. It's not a pretty business watching anybody die, especially a nice young kid with a whole life ahead of her. So I'll get down to the bar and get myself a drink. See you in court, Mason. Dear? We've got to, Sharon. Don't you see, Fred wasn't murdered. He killed himself. Hello, Captain. Steve Mason talking. I have a confession to make. The Carrington girl is innocent. She didn't kill Fred Winslow. I... Sharon, can't you understand? It would be different if they hadn't arrested that girl. But now we've got to tell. Of course, darling. But not on the phone. We'll tell him in person when he gets here. And what he heard will bring him on the run. In the meantime, you better have a drink and pull yourself together. I'm no angel, but murder, that's too rich for my blood. That's what it would be, you know, if we kept quiet and let them convict him. Murder. Technical murder. In a way, we're lucky. You haven't spent any of the insurance money, and the main thing they'll be interested in is getting the dough back. No idea. Maybe we can make a deal with them. They won't even prosecute. I wouldn't be too optimistic. Well, they're not going to do anything to you. I'm going to take the blame. I'll tell them the whole thing was my idea. You really do love me, don't you, Steve? You know I do. Here. Bottoms up. Thanks. You know, it may sound crazy, but I'm glad things turned out this way. I guess I wasn't cut out to be a crook. I haven't the nerve for it. No, I guess you haven't. Well, it'll soon be over. Yes. It'll soon be over. If I can't make a bargain with them, and I do go to jail. Will you wait for me? Of course, darling. Of course, I'll wait for you. If you go to jail. Funny, isn't it? 
We frame Fred's death to look like murder. It was murder, my sweet. What did you say? I'm getting dizzy, I get mixed up. Hearing things. Fred Winslow. Did you hear me? I killed him. You must be crazy. He left a note. Oh, you're so stupid. I wrote that note to make sure you give me the money. I didn't know about the suicide clause. That was a shock. But we worked it out, didn't we? Everything worked out. I was safe as pie. You tell your head to go noble about that silly meddling girl and call the police. Our Captain Lathe is coming over for your confession. You see, he thinks you're the murderer now. The way you were talking when I cut you off. If he got here too late, he'd be sure of it. Wouldn't he? Wouldn't he? No. No. It's a pretty nervous business working yourself up to commit suicide. The guy smokes. He suddenly doesn't take a time like that to lay off, does he? one for the morgue, Leggett. Well, I guess it's better this way. Yeah. At least it saves the cost of a trial. Well, stand back, everybody. Stand back. Hello, Jerry. Hello. What's all the excitement? Look. You jump in the cab and go on home. Well, what happened? Well, I guess you'll have to know sometime. It's Mason. Steve? Well, what about him? Just to the Dutch, out that window. You mean it's suicide? But why, Jerry, why? That old devil conscience, I guess. You see, Mrs. Winslow, he murdered your husband. S Steve? But I thought it was the, the Carrington girl. Mason called me not ten minutes ago, trying to confess over the phone. I got here as quick as I could, but I guess he couldn't wait. Be a good girl now and go on home. Park Lane Apartment. this washes up the Winslow case. Now, I suppose you'll tell me you had Mason pegged from the start, huh? I hate to admit it, Captain, but he was low man on my list. <laughs> that just goes to show you, Jerry, even you can have your off days. At that, I guess you rate a left-handed assist. If you hadn't put the finger on that Carrington girl, chances are Mason wouldn't have cracked. 
But that reminds me. I want to talk to you in a couple of days about the kid's old man. Get a free raw deal, too. Well, we can always talk about it, I suppose. I'd hate to have to advise her to sue you for false arrest. I said we could talk about it, didn't I? Come on. I can't believe it. Steve will murder He must have been out of his mind. They say love's a form of insanity, you know. A guy gets the end for a girl, there's nothing he won't do sometimes. You're not like that, are you? That's what I like about you. Makes it exciting. Never being quite sure what you're thinking. I'll tell you. I was just thinking this is the first case I ever had that I didn't make a nickel out of. Naturally, I expect to pay you for your time. Please, after the way I botched the whole thing from start to finish? Well, at least I owe you something. Okay. I've been wanting you to do that ever since the first day. That calls for a chaser. Definitely calls for a drink. Wait a second. How would you like to go on a fishing trip with me? But darling, have you forgotten the Devery system? Rule number one, never take a dame fishing. Train leaves at nine tonight. I've got two tickets. Just try to leave without me. And that calls for champagne. Relax, little boy. All right. That's a little better. You'll be all right with a little more practice. I guess I'm not the outdoor type. You better put this back in your compartment before I break it. Sorry you brought me. Sorry you came. I wouldn't have missed it for anything. That goes double. I'm sorry. I thought this was compartment A. Excuse me. Right next door, huh? Now, Mr. Devery, one of us at a time, please. <laughs> Let's try it again. Watch. Let's just talk a while. Talk? Mm-hmm. About you and me and... Well, I suppose it's morbid, but... I'm still curious about everything. For instance? Well, when did you first suspect Steve? I didn't. You must have suspected somebody. I know. Mr. Sapphire. Carrington girl? Who? You, lady. I mean, for heaven's sakes, I'm not that crazy. Hiring you to protect Fred if all the time I had other ideas. Mm, not so crazy. Finding a stooge to lead the cops down the wrong trail. Detective has to figure all the angles, you know. I suppose I shot the gun by remote control. You heard all the testimony. I was downstairs in the club all night. Everybody admitted that. Mm -hmm. No one saw Mason go up either, did they? Alibis. Dime a dozen in my business. Perhaps you never noticed. The window of your dressing room opened right on the fire escape. Ditto, one of the windows in your husband's office. Just for curiosity, I timed the trip. Up, bang, bang, down again. Two minutes. See what I mean about alibis? You frighten me, darling. 
can twist anything around. Getting stuffy. Let's go out and get some air. All right. Lucky for me, I guess Steve confessed. Did he? The way I heard it, all he said over the phone was that the Carrington girl was innocent. He jumped out of the window, didn't he? If he wasn't guilty, why did he do that? Cigarette? No, thank you. Didn't I ever tell you that I was in Mason's office just before it happened? He was pretty jittery, smoking one cigarette after the other. Ashtray spilling over with cigarette stubs. So I dumped him in the waste paper basket. When I go back up with Leggett to look the place over, there's the ashtray on the desk, all filled up again. What did Captain Leggett think about it? What should I tell him? I've got to make a living too, you know. I see. Of course, the real reason you didn't mention it was because you knew any smart lawyer would laugh it out of court, huh? Now, baby, I didn't say legal evidence, did I? I'll admit it has a certain nuisance value, the case being closed and everything. Oh, well, now, before we get to that, wouldn't you like to hear about the other bad break you got? But very bad, baby. The kind of Exhibit A that every district attorney dreams about. Little thing I pried out of Mason's hand as he was lying there on the sidewalk. Didn't he? Couldn't have. Where did you really get that pom pom, Jerry? In my apartment, I suppose. Between kisses. Funny. I don't even hate you for that. I guess we're a lot alike. If I'd known you before all this, you'd have been good for me. That's what I've always wanted. Somebody stronger than I was. Somebody who'd even go into court, and, I suppose, and swear that he found it in Steve's hand. You have to, darling? Could have lots of fun, you know. A hundred thousand dollars worth. Give it all to you. Not a chance, baby. That was the wrong answer, Jerry. That pom-pom, please. Oh, just between friends. You're going to pull that trigger anyway, aren't you? You're much too smart, darling. I think I'm going to like it this time. No real thrill killing the others. They were so stupid. But you're clever, Terry. Very clever. Yes, I'm going to like this. I really hate you, darling. That pom-pom, please. This is the first time I've seen you look so uncomfortable, Mr. Devery. I'm enjoying it. So we're wasting time. <sighs> nice going, Terry. That's more than I can say for your timing. That was too close for comfort. Well, I didn't want to show it till she'd spilled everything. Including my blood, huh? <laughs> So long, baby. Your fishing's going to seem awfully tame after this tiger hunt. 